Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am finally sitting down and creating a whole video on how to start a vending machine business step by step from what I have experienced myself and from my knowledge. So the next time anyone has a question, I can just send this link to them. I went through my Instagram DMs and I wrote down every question that I could find that people have asked me more than once about how to start this business. So let's just jump into it because I have a lot of pointers. Number one, you want to start your LLC. You can do this on LegalZoom. It may be a little bit more expensive to do it on LegalZoom, but that's because they they help you put everything together. They give you um, your business name. They check to make sure your business name isn't taken they will find tax information for you they will find insurance information for you they will also find permits for you in your area which is why i really like legal zoom and the reason why you want to start up a business entity right from the get-go is because you want your business name to match your email your business cards your flyers your social media and your bank account you cannot open a business bank account without already establishing your business so that should be your number one thing to do is get your l LC, which is what I have. My vending company is called Vin757. The next thing you want to do is research if your state or city requires permits for machines. There are states that require permits for each and every machine that you have. There are states that don't require any and there are states that require just one for that type of business that you're doing, whether it be gumball or the full line vending machines. LegalZoom does help with this, I believe. They try to put together a whole entire kit for you to go through and put in your information and find these things for you for your state. I don't know which state requires permits. You have to look it up yourself. I happen to live in Virginia and do my vending machines in Virginia, so we don't need those type of permits. So try to research that. Research, research, research. Also, you wanna join groups on Facebook, like Vending Nation, Full Line Vending Machines, so you can ask questions as you go. They can answer if you're, how your machine is broken by you posting pictures. They can answer how much money they make. They can answer what area they're in. They can answer who can give you labels, who can give you machines, who can ship machines to you. You wanna join these Facebook group, groups in order for you to learn and get connections. I would say another step is to now find where to get machines. I suggest buying refurbished machines. Yes, they're more expensive than used machines, but they are not as expensive as new machines. If you find connect connections where to get them, you can go on Craigslist, OfferUp, Facebook, let go and you will find people who are selling their vending machines or their vending machine routes. So you need to find a connect where to get your machines. You don't wanna start a vending machine business and have no idea where you're going to buy your machines. So those are a few places you can get them. Also, you can get them on Google. Google vending machine companies near me and you're sure to find vending machine places near your vicinity that can either ship them to you or you can actually go and pick them up and they're not that far. My next tip would be don't buy a machine until you have a location. And when you secure a place, say, quote unquote, your machine will be shipped soon and delivered soon. I will update you every step of the way. You do not need to buy a machine and then try to place it because you may find out that you are not very good at door to door selling to get people or to convince people to place a machine in there and you may hate door to deal door to door selling if you don't have the personality charming or extroverted enough to go to someone's place and talk to them face to face and try to get them to let you in their business you may hate this business so don't buy a machine until you secure a location and you are comfortable with going out and talking to people what kind of machines do I like? I like Wittern, USI, and AMS as of right now. Those are the three machines I use. And a machine I do not recommend is Sege, S-E-A-G-A. -E I don't recommend them, some people use them, but everybody in the Facebook group will tell you don't buy them. They break a lot, and I think they're Chinese-made machines. Also, don't buy really old machines because you cannot put a credit card machine up there. So you wanna check when that machine was made. And you want to ask, is it MDB 
MDB compatible. My next tip would be, and question I always get is, who repairs my machines? You can learn to fix your machines by going on YouTube and typing in your problem. You can find how to fix it. If you're good at handiwork, you can just figure it out yourself. You can post videos on the Facebook group of your problem like actually film what's going on with your machine and people will try to help you. However, what I do right now is I learn as I go and I hire people to come and fix my machines. There is a vending machine fixer guy where I live that I can just call up and the price is about $75 an hour. You can Google these type of fixing companies on Craigslist or on Google. I'm pretty sure there's someone near you who can direct you into who can fix your vending machine. How do I move my machines? You need, to, you need a pickup truck or a moving truck with a hydraulic lift or lift gate and use straps to strap it down. You can lay your machine down, but it does mess it up and you want to let it sit for one hour before you turn it on. So I choose not to lay my machines down. I just hire someone else to do it and strap them down. Some people don't have the lift. Um, but the lift makes it easier. So if you, you've probably seen some people on YouTube who don't have the lift. You don't need it, but it does make it easier and quicker. My seller adds on a shipping fee on top of the price of the machine. So I just pay that. You can rent these, these trucks from U-Haul. So U-Haul has everything you, you're going to need, but it's more expensive. Where to buy food, Sam's Club, Costco's, BJ's, Sam's Club online. You can buy your sodas direct from Pepsi. Um, just go online and find it. I recommend getting the um, cash back cards for Sam's Club and Costco's because you're gonna be buying a lot of food there so you might as well get cash back when you hit a certain amount of number. What sells the most is relative. What sells at one place may not sell at another. One or two healthy options is fine. If you want to put healthy food in there, one or two options, maybe three options is okay. But a whole healthy vending machine doesn't do well with the business. Healthy vending machines don't make a lot of money. People claim they want healthy options. People claim they want a whole healthy vending machine. Don't do it. You're not going to make a lot of money. I've, I've taken a location from a place because all they offered was healthy vending and they wanted them out as soon as possible and they wanted my machine in that location instead. So just add a few healthy options into your machine. Don't go all out and do every single row as healthy. Get insurance. I already stated this as number one when you when you create your business, but I'm gonna reiterate it now. Get insurance, LegalZoom will send you options and set up calls for you to ask questions. And that's why I like LegalZoom. It's a little bit more expensive starting with them, but that's because they offer everything in a package for you. Insurance can cost about $40 to $40 to $45 a month for like a million dollars in insurance. I'm not sure, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure insurance a month is kind of inexpensive for this business. The question I usually always, always, always get is how much commission do I give? Should I give commission? How don't I give commission? Should I offer a high percentage commission? I try not to offer commission anymore as of 2020. I don't even bring it up to my people who I'm talking to because I don't want to share my money. I would say if they do ask for commission, try to get maybe 5 to 10% commission and explain to them why it's that low. Tell them vending machines don't make a lot of money. It's just here to help you and your customers and your employees fill their bellies with energy. Try to tell them that this is a benefit to them, not a benefit to you. It's all about helping them out and stress that to them so that you can make them see that you're not making too much money, even if you are. Don't let them know. With the little bit, I would say 15% is my max. However, if I have a huge location, maybe like a college, I would be up to offer 30 to 40%, even 50% because colleges make a lot of money. But that's not gonna happen for me anytime soon because you have to compete for a contract for a college. That's just an example. Credit card machines, which one's the best? Nyx, USA Port, ePort. 
I use Nyax. I don't know who's better. I just know who I use. Nyax is $9.99 a month for reporting everything. I can see how much cash is in my box. I can see how much credit sales are doing. I can see how much people are buying for a certain product. It is a very hands-on complex service and I really like them. The customer service is the bomb so I do recommend Nyax. And the device itself costs $300. So yes, it's expensive. It is an investment, but credit card machines will lift your sales at least up 10, 15, 20, even 30% if you have a credit card reader. I would give my advice as to not finance your machines unless you have an extraordinary location like 300 people 200 people and you need a machine immediately and you don't have the money then I would finance maybe one or two machines even three machines if that location is so big that they need that much I would finance however starting off my business financing I would not recommend if you're only buying one machine do not finance just save your money up from your other job and get the machine then because you don't want to be like right now stuck with the virus that we have right now and you can't pay your financing fees back because you're not working or your machines aren't be being used or your location just closed down now you're stuck paying on a machine that isn't making money i personally don't recommend financing but other people will say yes finance but as of right now i am straying away from that and if you need to save up i would recommend you guys use the weeble link down below to invest in some stocks that will also help you get money if you are doing short-term stocks short-term stocks is you'll buy one day and then three days later five days later you will sell it for a higher price that is what short-term buying and selling is that's what i did to finance my vending machine business i made a lot of money and i invested six thousand dollars in my vending machine business and stocks was really the way to go so weeble gives you two free stocks one for signing up and one for depositing into um, your account so I would say do that. The link is below. It really did help me save up for my vending machine business. Next, I would say don't push contracts on locations. If you're just starting out in the vending machine business, some people will agree. Some people will disagree. Maybe it's the older um, people who have been in the business longer who will not agree with this advice. But I've had some people who do agree with this advice. Don't push contracts on a location. You are probably inexperienced on writing contracts. You need a lawyer to write a contract. So I don't do contracts right now, like I've said before, unless I have like too many machines, I will probably start doing contracts, but I don't see needing to do it right now. If a location wants it, I will draw one up to my best ability, but I'm not gonna push contracts on anyone. It's just more, it's just more problems and some locations like how you can talk to them saying oh it's no commitment if you don't like it i can remove it in a month Pe people like that they kind of like the whole okay i can choose to move it if there's no more space for it or if no one's using it or if it's break broken into so some people like how there's no written ties to the machine and my next advice would be don't be afraid to drive to different cities that are close to you in order to place a machine chances are you may live in an area where all the locations already have vending machines so drive 30 minutes drive an hour you know drive around and start looking in those areas and you may find some good gems out there where do I get my labels, whether it be for my gumball machines or it be for the products inside my soda machines or anywhere else? I get mine from Ernie Brown. You can find him in the Facebook group Vending Nation. I'll also pop up his name and his picture so you can see who I'm talking about. I get my labels from him. He's awesome, so go talk to him. Make sure you keep all your receipts. Gas food, your repairs, your returns, spoiled food, and LegalZoom also helps you with your taxes. This year I'm going to do my taxes um, somewhere locally until I set up more stuff with LegalZoom, but again that's why I like LegalZoom because they really help you out with everything. How much you make 
is relative. I always get this question, how much money do you make? How much money does a vending machine business make? How much money this? How much money that? It is relative. Some machines make $10 a week, some make $50 a week or more. Location, location, location. It is key to how much you're going to make. And just because you have a building with 300 people doesn't mean your vending machine is gonna do the best because what I have found is that um, places that have workers who are always repairing or moving or doing things that are active spend more money on food because they are getting hungrier rather than people who sit at a desk all day. They may not buy as much food as you think they would. But 300 people at an account is, you know, an eye twitch. Like, you don't want to miss out on that possibility. But that doesn't mean that that place is going to make more money than the repair shop down the street. Um, some of the best places, I guess, I can answer for you, maybe like laundromats. Um, some people say schools. Some people say not schools. If you can get your vending machine in the hallway where the students also can access the machine, then that's going to be a great account. Um, colleges, of course, but those are just way advanced contracts to get, so those are hard. Um, repair shops, tire shops, um, offices that have over 100 people who work there. Um, mainly a lot of places that have 100 and more people will be a good account, but I know people who say that they have 60 people at an account and the machine just always sells out. You just never know what people, what kind of people are gonna buy from your machine. I noticed that younger men are my best customers because they eat, eat, eat. They have such a fast metabolism. So I really hope that I helped with this. I tried to get my most commonly asked questions into this video and put it together for you. I really enjoy voice voiceovers and I enjoy watching people just stock the machine while they talk. It's very relaxing. So that's why I wanted to do this video with this style. So if I didn't answer a question that needed to be answered um, follow me on Instagram and DM me and if I keep getting different questions I will keep making these type of videos but I hope you enjoyed like share comment down below please if I helped you and subscribe of course it really does help don't forget to use Weeble down below it does give you free money and you need to get on your financial freedom because we all need money I'll talk to you guys later